Whereas the board that we've been waiting for is the B850 ITX motherboard. So it's going to be more affordable. And on top of that, it's actually better objectively than the 870 ITX board uh, in some departments. Welcome to Machines More. So motherboard options have been a sticking point for AM5 ITX builds, and I've reviewed most of them here on this channel. And the one that I've been recommending for that mid, uh, mid-high tier level of build has been ASUS's B650E-I. This one here is the second ITX option from ASUS's 800 series ITX uh, offerings. They had the X870, which I reviewed recently, but I think many folks, myself included, were looking forward to the B850 chipset, which like all B-level chipsets, it's gonna offer a good balance of price to performance. And this board here will give you close to the performance of that X870i board, but at a lower cost. I don't have the exact MSRP yet from ASUS and with the embargo timing and CES plans, I did have to film this beforehand, but logically I would expect the pricing to be in line with the B650E-I when it first launched, which was around $325. So hopefully this comes in at that mark or maybe even less. Uh, before we begin here, I did wanna thank ASUS for providing the board for us to test and review, especially ahead of the embargo and we'll be visiting with them soon at CES, but I did wanna let you know that I'm not paid by them for this review. This video is also not sponsored by them. And you can always expect a fair and objective review as with all the reviews on this channel. So at first glance, the B850 chipset might seem like a step down in level versus the B650E, uh, its predecessor, but there's actually no B850 Extreme currently. Uh, the way that ASUS has spec this board though definitely beats out the B650E. Uh, first off, similar to the 650E, uh, for this board, we get an X16 Gen 5 slot, and that spec is completely optional for BA50. The Gen 4 is the standard, but ASUS has gone ahead and implemented this, and uh, this one does have the new Q release that we saw with the XA70i. Uh, you will not need to press down on the latch to re release your card. You need to tilt the card towards the this side, and then this will kind of pop out. Kicker is that with this board, both M.2 slots are Gen 5 and running off the CPU lane. So with the 650E, you did get the one Gen 5, but the second one was Gen 4. This M.2 setup actually beats out the X870-i, which has one Gen 5 and one Gen 4. One thing I would add is if you're looking to run a drive in the back is to consider adding a heatsink to it because otherwise only air circulation around that drive will aid in drawing heat off of the drive. And due to the back position, of the M.2 slot, there simply isn't going to be much air movement in most ITX builds there. With the new board, the main M.2 has the new style of Q latch, which is just a press down to toggle and uh, versus the old one where you had to turn it. So a small uh, quality of life improvement there. And they also include this rubber pad, which helps you support your M.2 drive if you, you've got a gap between that and the uh, bottom heat sink. One thing to keep in mind is that you only get this Gen 5 spec if you are using a Ryzen 7000 or 9000 CPU. So for the Ryzen 8000 APUs, you only get Gen 4 across the board, including that expansion slot. Turning our attention to the rear I.O., here we've got five 10 gig USB ports. Uh, four of these are type A, one is type C right here. And uh, this Type-C port will also double as a display port out. You do have two USB 2A ports and the highest speed port here is this single Type-C 20 gig port. Port setup is identical to the B650E-I. In terminal connectors, we do have a 10 gig Type-C and a five gig header right here, which typically connects to your Type-A ports and you have the one uh, USB 2 header over here. In total versus the X870-i, that board has two USB 4, 40 gig Type-C ports compared to the single 20 gig port right here on the uh, B850. And you'll also miss out on one additional USB 2 port with this board. However, the 850 has something the X870 doesn't, 
and that is onboard audio. So same as the B650E-I, you have an ALC4080 codec paired with a Safitec SV3H712 amp, which is a pretty good setup as far as motherboard audio goes. And you do have an optical out, which can be useful in addition to your standard line in, line out and mic setup. Other goodies, Wi-Fi has been upgraded to Wi-Fi 7 with ASUS's new Q antenna, which is just a push fit connect. It's very handy. You still do only have that 2.5 GE, which isn't surprising considering that that's uh, what the 870-i has too. And something that I really wanted with the 650E, drum roll, a clear CMOS button, which especially in an ITX build can help you avoid a lot of hair loss. One more thing that makes me really happy is that this board has f not three, but four, okay? Four full-size fan headers. None of these require a dongle. And so this will have the most fan headers for any ITX board now. And you also have two ARGB headers. They basically took away one of the, or the 12 volt RGB header on the 650E-I and replaced it with another five volt uh, header, which can be handy. You know, if you're running a whole a bunch of ARGB and you don't wanna keep splitting them off, you know, that's what that's for. Consistent with all of their ITX boards, ASUS continues to place all the fan and RGB headers here at the top. It's a very convenient location, easy to find. This, uh, you know, something that's not actually that easy to do and they continue to deliver on that front. Huge quality of life thing here. Little tidbit for those of you that are doing a custom with this build, you do still get that temp probe header, something that's been special with ASUS's AMD ITX boards. And if you're curious, the mono block that I have here for an 8X670E-I works with this one just like it did with the 650E and also the X870 once it, you know, you fully thread that in. Power delivery on this one is all but identical to the 650E-I, which is a 10 plus two, uh, 10 V core plus two SOC setup with 70 amps per stage. It's compared to the X870-I, which has a similar setup, but with 110 amp stages. Uh, on paper, that one is higher spec, in reality, the 70 amp stages will be fine for any current AM5 CPU. Uh, for real world use, you're probably not gonna notice a whole lot of difference. They continue to use what ASUS calls its smart power stage. They're supposed to have better current and temperature monitoring capability for more protection and uh, stable performance. With this board, you have one mini board heatsink cooling fan, which can be heard during your boot up sequence. But other than that, even though you can't tune this one in your BIOS, it's mostly tame. And I like the way they integrated the intake grill here. You know, it's almost like you can't tell that that's what that's for. That's pretty subtle. Two DDR5 slots. The spec here is up to 8,200 mega transfers per second with Ryzen 9000. The X870 does have a little bit faster at 8,400. Again, for real world use, uh, 6,000 megahertz RAM is gonna be you know, the sweet spot for most users. So likely you're not gonna see a big difference there. Build quality is good. Uh, their boards tend to be well built. Typically, this one is a 10 layer PCB, just like the X870-I, but you won't get the back shields that that one has. So this one is, you have to be a little bit more careful about uh, protecting the bottom here. For overall, it'll be fine for most builds. And uh, generally speaking, while I do think the 870-I board is quite nice, this board, it's gonna be the one that is of interest for most builders. So I'm testing here in the McPru Apollo S 4.0 reviewed recently, uh, testing with the 9800X and uh, the same one with the uh, that I tested with the X870i with. Boots up just fine. And still, still got those uh, convenient onboard debug LEDs. They're very, very helpful. Here I'm using the Nocto U12A and uh, for a multi-core heavy scenario and blender, CPU clocks are similar to what you would get in the 870-i. Same power drawdown between all three boards. For your single core scenarios, I did notice that the clocks were in fact slightly lower than the other two ASUS X series boards. It's not likely to have a meaningful impact, but it is worth noting. Uh, on the other hand, the game clocks were a little bit better here with Far Cry 6. The main take home here is that your real world experience is gonna be similar between your higher end chipsets and the B850 for stock CPU performance. This will be fine 
with other Ryzen 9000 CPUs, including the 9800X 3D or 9950X, uh, which the 9800X 3D is a lot less demanding power-wise than either of the, the 9900X or 9950X, so you'll, you'll be fine there. The B850 has a more humble VRM setup, and I will note I tested the X870-I in the NR200, and that board had three reported VRM temps, which I had to average out. So we're not exactly comparing apples to apples here, but uh, just to get an idea, because the point is just to show you that you'll be fine with a safe operating uh, temp on your VRM, even with a more power-hungry CPU. And the chipset temps are absolutely fine here as well. So really no concern uh, for the VRM setup. As mentioned, the back M.2 is Gen 5 compatible and you absolutely get Gen 5 speed. So the one I tested here isn't the fastest of the bunch, but this is the speed that you could expect with the M700 when you pop it into another Gen 5 slot. So it is as advertised in that regard. And I do want to show you real quick ASUS's BIOS. So new features here include the Q dashboard. That'll give you a comprehensive view of the board's I.O. It's just more of a visual reference if you, you know, you find that convenient. And uh, the fan curves with the Q fan are a little bit more granular here. You got more points of control. As with the X870i, this board supports AIOC, which can be helpful even if you are fairly competent with CPU tuning. It does give you a good baseline to start from. And there's a pretty robust set of data logging as well uh, as an evaluation for your cooling system. One other function is a dynamic OC switcher, which will run in PBO mode for low core count scenarios, and then you can enable that uh, to switch to manual OC for higher core count operations. Perhaps this is not something that most users will worry about too much, uh, but it's nice to know that it's fully enabled with a B-level board. B-series boards tend to be more mid-range or value-focused, but I think for most users, I would recommend the B850i, period, because compared to the A70 ITX, your stock performance with your AM5 CPUs is gonna be all but identical. No add-on cards or external audio devices to deal with uh, full onboard audio, right? You also have the debug light, front panel connectors, and that it actually beats out the 870 in terms of the M.2 setup and that it has the extra fan header is just icing on the cake. As mentioned early on, I wish I had the MSRP. And that being said, if this board is similar in pricing to the 650E-I's price, this is gonna be my go-to board. Uh, plus it's here, it's just a very user-centric board. You got tons of little quality of life things. I've actually had every ASUS B board since the 450, and uh, this is a line that ASUS cares about. I've seen the incremental improvement here. You got their CMOS button, extra fan header, yeah, four, right? It's kind of crazy. Those little touch point improvements are time savers. You got the BIOS flashback still, you know, temp probe header, and you still got a decently robust power delivery setup. Yeah, it's still likely to be around that 300 US mark, and I am reviewing this without having seen other manufacturers be a 50 ITX boards yet, but this is gonna be a tough one to beat, and this would be my first choice for pairing with a 9800X 3D or other type of uh, mid-tier build. Layout is great, BIOS is excellent. The IO, it's you know the same as 650E-I, but I think it's plenty for most users, unless you have a need for the highest speed port, I would actually choose this one over the X870-I. It's a solid board that we will continue to try out in different builds. I don't know how the price is gonna shake out for the 650E, if that's still gonna be available into the future, but if that continues to drop as well, that's also still a very solid option for similar tier builds. So I wasn't able to get to all the boards that are being announced, I think it's gonna be today, but I will still be reviewing the tough MATX, the uh, B850 board, and uh, yeah, with CES and our site, there's tons more content coming your way. So please make sure you are subscribed to get more of that uh, content. Uh, smash that like if you enjoyed it. Uh, links will be added when the board is available. And thanks for watching today.